In the last video I shared my absolute favourite technique for combining three differently exposed photos from an architectural photography shoot into one seamless image. Now the reason I love that technique is because it gives you maximum control over the results and therefore the highest quality of output that you're going to send back to your client. But it's a bit of a mission to get to that end result. First of all I'm processing my images in Lightroom, sending them into Photoshop and then using a plug-in panel to actually create the luminosity masks I needed for the end result. And some of you good folk out there posed the question, can can you do the same thing inside Luminar Neo? And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So that maximum control that I love so much from the previous technique does come at a cost, and that is time investment, you've also got to know what you're doing, and it's not actually that easy. Now in spite of the fact that one of the driving principles for Skyland when they created Luminar was to take convoluted and complex photo editing tasks and simplify them, I've always kind of steered away from using Luminar for my high-end architectural work. But I did used to be a huge fan of Aurora for this very task of merging multiple exposures into one. And even though Aurora's been discontinued, thankfully the heart of it lives on inside the engine of the new HD our merge plugin. So it is that that I'm going to use inside of this video to see if we can replicate a similar result. It's going to be a completely different process, but we'll see how similar the result is. We're going to work with three differently exposed images of this lounge. We have a base exposure, which is pretty good overall, but you can see the problem. We are blown out in the highlights. We don't have any detail out of the window, and it's that that predominantly I want to bring back. So that's where we rely on this darker exposure, which looks great out of the window, but now the problem is the interior is getting far too dark on us. And then we also have a brighter exposure, which looks great for the shadow areas around here, but we are so overexposed out of the window and even in the room as well. So what we want to do is actually combine the best of all three into one photo. The miracle that is our eyes can do it in real time when we're there at the scene, but unfortunately the camera can't capture that massive discrepancy between the very brightest highlights, the darkest shadows known as the high dynamic range, and it's that that we're going to see if we can solve here in Luminar Neo. So you may think that the best option would be to just grab all three of these and drag them straight into HDR Merge. However, as you can see here, to get the framing I want featuring the ceiling and the floor and the height that I want to photograph this at, I've actually had to tilt my camera down slightly and that has resulted in converging lines and this is really common, this keystoning effect that you get with architectural photography. Let's take a look how to solve that. We're going to jump into the develop section and all we need to do is scroll all the way down here to transform. If that's tucked away, just expand it. And as you can see from the window frames here, it's the verticals that are at fault. So we could actually try to start correcting for those verticals, which we can absolutely do with this slider here. But I'm going to double click that to reset it because I'm going to show you a much easier way. And that is just to click this button here and Luminar has used its AI to work out where all the edges are and just straighten everything up for us, which is great. Now, if you feel that during the process of having those verticals corrected, you've actually got the geometry getting slightly distorted, you have access to this aspect slider here. And I'm just going to move that so you can see what that does. It's literally stretching and crushing down the photo. So we can use that to rebalance our proportions. If your lens suffers from any barrel distortion or pin cushioning, you can come up to the lens distortion slider to fix that up. Or if you're using a raw file, you can just turn on the auto correction. And now I'm happy with my geometry here, I'm just going to synchronize that across the other photos so that they all match. And so to do that, I'm just going to shift click on the very last photo and right click on the initial one, come to adjustments, and I just need to sync those adjustments. If you want for the hotkeys, control shift S is what you need. And now all three of those photos have been corrected. And so now we just drag those three files into the HDR merge tool, right? Well, no, we need to do something else here, and that is actually export those photos as new versions of themselves. Because if we were to take those photos into the HDR merge tool, it's going to use the originals before we corrected for that geometry, and it's going to spit out an HDR file that still has that tilt that we've just corrected for. So what I recommend you do, and this is really useful for when you're doing any HDR work inside of Luminar Neo, or anything that also involves layers or multiple tools, because you can spit out a flattened version and then start working on that again. And that is very beneficial if you're wanting to free up your memory. If Luminar Neo is starting to run a bit slower, you can basically use a brand new frame fresh version of your file without any tools applied. So it's a really good technique. I'll show you what I mean. 
Okay, so I'm gonna right click on these to export them. Again, I could use a hotkey, shift, control, and E, and I'm gonna spit these out as TIFF. So anytime you're wanting to carry on working on your files, you wanna make sure that you're building the highest quality possible into the file. So rather than using a JPEG, we wanna go for a TIFF. Make sure it's a 16-bit TIFF, not 8-bit. And in terms of the color space, you don't wanna be using sRGB. You want the larger Adobe RGB color space. Profoto RGB is even bigger still, however you're not going to see those additional colors on a standard monitor, so I'm happy using Adobe RGB, we're good to go. But instead of sending that out to the HDR merge folder, what I'm going to do is come in and I'm just going to create a new temporary folder. There we go, temp delete regularly. And it seems silly, but I add delete regularly to the end of that folder name, just as a little nudge to myself to remind myself, flush those files out regularly because we don't need these extra files cluttering up our system long-term. So now we need to add our temporary folder into Luminar Neo. So we just click on the plus icon here. We're in the temp delete regularly folder. Just And now we're able to select these three photos and drag them over into the HDR merge tool. These were shot on a pretty sturdy tripod, so I don't need to worry about auto alignment, I don't think. I'm not worrying about chromatic aberration reduction or ghost reduction, which is to do with if you've got objects moving in your scene between the different exposures. These were all shot within milliseconds of each other. So we should be all good. So all I need to do is just click the merge tool and let Luminar do all the heavy lifting. And there you go, just like that, we now have our HDR merged version. We have the three different exposures all brought into one. So we've achieved a pretty good merge there in a much more time efficient way than the previous method that I shared with you. So let's compare the luminosity blended version that I created in Photoshop in the last video with this current version that I've created in Luminar Neo. Now this is subjective and it comes down to aesthetic preference, but I find the version I created in Photoshop to be much more natural and more believable, whereas the version that we've just done inside Luminar Neo with the HDR merge certainly says, hello, I am an HDR file. So is there anything that we can do to get this looking a little bit more natural? I think there is, let's take a look. And this is a great technique for any HDR work. I use it for architecture and landscapes, and it basically comes down to, again, stealing the best bits from different files. So we have our HDR merged photo in front of us, and it looks pretty good, but like I say, it does look a little bit fake to my eye. So what I'm gonna do is load up one of our original files, that base layer, put it over the top and steal the best bits of each of these. So I'm going to come to the top left into the layer section, click the plus icon, which is gonna allow me to add a new image over the top of this HDR merge. And here I'm gonna select the 01 base file and just click open. And currently nothing has happened because we actually need to click on that actual layer for Luminar to load it up. And now we have our base layer put over the top of the HDR merge and we're seeing a 50-50 blend. And the reason we're seeing half of each of these photos is because our opacity is currently set to 50%. So if I grab this and move this up, we're gonna see 100% of this new layer, the base layer that we've introduced. And if I take that all the way to the left, we're gonna see the HDR merge. And when you flick between the two, you can kind of see how the HDR merge, as good as it is, it has that kind of fakey feel to it. So for the most part, I like this 50-50 blend between the two photos. However, I wanna see more of that detail outside. So that would involve bringing down the opacity of this layer that we've dropped over the top. I also think that the interior looks a little bit more believable with more of this top original base layer showing. And so I can't just set this at 50% and then expect to mask in more. So what I'm gonna do is actually just crank this all the way to 100 so we're seeing fully this original base layer. So I'm gonna to come to the masking options and using the brush, I'm gonna erase with 50% so that we're actually revealing the layer underneath to that 50-50 split again. And now if I want to see more of what's going on outside, I just need to move my strength of my brush up and remove more of that mask outside and that's just gonna enrich that beautiful view that we've got out there. If we've got areas where we feel that HDR look is just a little bit too strong, all we need to do is come to the paintbrush, click and start to paint some of that original base layer back in. Just so we can get an appreciation for what we've done by way of comparison, I'm just gonna load up that base layer again so we can see what we've done. So this is our merged HDR version. This is our original base layer, and now if I move the HDR version to the bottom of the stack and now hide that layer, we're gonna see our nice blend that we've done. And that's using the best bits of the HDR layer with the best bits of that base layer. 
So by putting those two frames together, I think we're much closer to the version that I spent a long time in Lightroom, Photoshop and Lumenzia actually creating in that previous video. I've been using Photoshop since the mid 90s and I kind of know it like the back of my hand. I use it for all of the high-end architectural work and I think the reason for that is that I want my high-end work to be achieved via a high-end software application that takes a long time to master like Photoshop. I don't really want Luminar Neo to be able to do the things that I can do in Photoshop because it makes it accessible to everybody. However as frustrating as it may be, let's take a look and see whether Luminar Neo can actually handle some of the more high-end editing or finishing touches that I'd normally apply to my architectural work. So before I go making any changes to this photo, I need to do what we did previously, which was export it as a temporary file. So I'm going to right click, come to export, give it an appropriate name and send it to that temporary folder. The reason for that is if I was to start working on this photo, I'm only going to be working on this layer. So for example, if I came over and I did something crazy, let's jump into the curves and let's just boost the blue channel here. You can see that it's only affecting this layer here. So the areas where we're seeing more of the HDR layer shown through, you'll see that that is unaffected by this change. It is only that original base layer where we started reintroducing that with a mask that is being affected. And so any changes that I'm wanting to make now, I actually want it to affect the photo as a whole. And in our temporary folder, we now have access to this same photo except the main difference is, huge difference in fact, it is no longer layers, it is now just one solid single photo entity that we can edit globally. So one of the big problems that I suffer from is actually dust spots on my sensor. I'm really bad for cleaning my sensor. Thankfully Luminar has a great tool which is the remove dust spots tool. So I'm just going to click that and hopefully it will just get rid of these little items. And sure enough, it's done a great job. Now, if you've got the HDR merge extension, you will also have noiseless AI. And one of the problems that I find when I'm merging multiple photos is, particularly in the shadows, you will often suffer from a bit of noise. And so we may as well just benefit from noiseless AI, give it a go and see what it comes up with. And I'm really pleased that in this latest version of Luminar Neo, a few tools including noiseless AI have been sped up because they're no longer just using the CPU, they're using the GPU, the graphical processing unit inside your computer. So they're moving a bit quicker, which is great. If you don't have noiseless AI or HDR merge, which hopefully you do because I've featured it so much in this video, but you can actually use the link in the description below and get the best price on whatever that is at the moment. And that helps me out with my channel, keep making free content so I get small commission from that as well. It doesn't cost you guys any extra, so I appreciate if you use that link. Currently I haven't applied any sharpening to my photo, and so let's close down Noiseless AI and jump over into the Details section and see what we can do. And I'm actually a really big fan of Luminar's default sharpening. Like I'm gonna push this like far too extreme. You'd never wanna use this at 100%, but it's just a nice, clean sharpening algorithm. I'm gonna dial this way back, probably around, I don't know, 40. That's pretty good. But if I toggle our before and our after, before and after, Let's come up here where there's a little bit more definition and again see our before and our after, before and after. It really does do a good job. Now if you're doing architectural work where you want to bring out more details, you have access to the small details, the medium details and the large details. And I'm going to crank all of those till they look absolutely disgusting, far too much. But if I toggle the eye tool before and after, you can see what they're doing. They are certainly enhancing the details, but obviously 100 is far, far, far too much. But what about if we just tickle a little bit of this in, I don't know, around sort of five with each of these, so it's much more subtle. Okay, let's come to this area here. We've got heaps of detail inside and out. Here's our before, here's our after. It really does add a nice bit of impact by just popping in a little bit of the details, a little bit of sharpening. Now, what about color cast, such as the kind of yellowy look we've got going on on the ceiling? Well, in Photoshop, I'd be using a very similar tool where I can actually dial in specifically to a color. And the best way to see the colors is to actually crank the saturation all the way to 100, and we can start to see the colors with much more intensity and actually gauge whether we've got any casts going on. And now in the ceiling, we can see that absolutely we have a strong yellow influence. So we can start to bring that down. There's a little bit of orange on the left-hand side and maybe even a little bit of green as well. So we can just have a little play around with that and just reduce it. And once we're happy that we've targeted the right area, we can just double click this slider here so that the overall saturation returns to where it was. And now we can just toggle our before and our after, before and after, and you can see that we're neutralizing the ceiling. However, we're also neutralizing the grass. And so we just wanna mask this in. So probably the easiest way is just to grab a linear gradient 
pull that over the ceiling and let's have a little look. Here's our before, here's our after, and everything else is left untouched. Now, one thing I did notice when I was having a little play around with the saturation was that I did actually like that little saturation bump, particularly outside. So I'm going to open up a new color tool and now we're talking into the whole photo. That mask that we created before only applies to this version here of the color tool, which is dropped into our edit section. I'm now working on a brand new version of the tool and I can grab the saturation slider and we can start to play with that and put that where we want it. I don't want to be too aggressive, maybe plus 11 is about right. I do feel that the interior is a little dark, so what I'm gonna do is open up a develop tool. Now, I could either boost up the exposure, and that is one option for doing that, or I could work with my curves. And I think in this case, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna jump into the curve section, put a little point around the shadows just left of those mid-tones, and just start boosting that up until I get that to a point where I feel like, yeah, that's brightening up the interior nicely. If we're starting to bleach out the highlights too much, we can just put another point higher up and just bring that down, because that controls the highlights. And if we want to be specific about where we're putting this effect, we can come in and again use our masking options. So I'm just gonna grab a brush this time and with a strength fairly low, maybe around 40%, I'm just gonna click and start painting and wherever you're seeing this kind of pinky red, that is where we're gonna be brightening up using that boost in the curves. So when I release, we get to see that effect. And if I want to double down on the effect, I just paint over the areas where I want to brighten them. And now let's come over and toggle our before and our after, nice. I don't really feel like we need to do too much more to this image, but a few other tools that might be of use would be Enhance AI. So I'm just gonna push this all the way and get really aggressive with this. And you can see how with this set to 100, it really is quite an impactful look, but I don't wanna be anywhere near as aggressive as that, but let's tick a little bit of that in. And another tool that can be really useful would be Structure AI. Again, I already feel like we've got all the structure we need in this photo, but let me just demonstrate what that can do. And I'll push that again all the way to 100. And so if you've got areas of texture like the floor here, and you wanna bring more of that out or in the fabric, for example, you can just push some Structure AI in and then just mask that in where you want it. This is ridiculously excessive, but look, let's put a bit of it in just for demonstration purposes. And again, let's mask it in only where we want it. So let's put a little bit over the fire, a little bit over the couches, and let's put some over the wood as well. So now when I toggle our before and after, before and after, very subtle because I've kept the adjustment amount down at 17, but you can see if I push that to 100, it's just masking in only where I've painted. So let's just ease this in just very slightly. Now in this example, I probably didn't need to put in any accent AI, any structure AI, but for demonstration purposes, I just wanted to show that in fact, Luminar Neo does have a lot of benefits over Photoshop. But because I have applied a couple of tools that have added a kind of sense of crunchiness to this image, that's a technical term, I feel like it needs to be just softened down a little bit. And so I'm gonna apply my favorite tool and you guys that watch my channel know what it is. That's right, the mystical tool. Ooh, mystical. For architecture, who knew? Let's give it a go. All right, I'm gonna scroll down, jump into mystical, and we won't need too much of this, but just for the sake of demonstration again, I'm gonna push this all the way to 100, and you can see exactly what it's doing. It softens everything off. And so, because, like I say, it's pretty crunchy at the moment, let's just grab a bit of that, put it in, I don't know, round 20. Let's see our before and our after, before and after. And I just think it's adding a really nice bit of soft contrast to your image. So now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison to compare can Luminar Neo compete with the likes of the mighty Photoshop, Lightroom, plus Lumenzia, and all of the time that I invested into getting my finished shot there. Let's take a look. In the comments below, let me know which version do you prefer, the Photoshop version or the Luminar version. And secondly, let me know which method you prefer. If you haven't seen the technique using Photoshop yet, I'm gonna to link to that video right here. And if you haven't subscribed, you can click that button there and I will see you in the next video. Maybe that one. Cheers guys, catch you later.